Okay, you know, there are so many tall tales and myths surrounding two composers who are the composers of the week uh, here at the Festival of the Sound, Liszt and Paganini. So many myths that I thought we should have two experts here to talk about the myths. And talk also about the truths, because they're no less fascinating. I mean, Paganini, for instance, published just five works in his lifetime. Uh, the other 70, seven zero, um, he felt were too hard for everybody else, and he kept them for his own use. Liszt, on the other hand, as we'll hear from Adam in a minute, Liszt was a totally different uh, ball game altogether. He published everything. First editions, second editions, final editions, a thousand works altogether, a vast amount of music, so we need some help in navigating a, a way through all this music and through these myths. And we have two experts sitting right next to me who uh, have been bringing this music to life for us this week, and I'm thrilled that they're here. We have Adam Jerzy, who is the pianist, who's been bringing Liszt to life, and Johanna Tanberic, violinist, who's uh, about to bring Paganini to life uh, tonight and tomorrow. So welcome both. Thank you. Now, we most recently heard Liszt this afternoon, a wonderful recital. So let me ask you, uh, Adam, how great a pianist was Liszt? Do you know, Keith, it's, it's a great question. I, I, um, I'm trying to answer it on, on the best way I can. Uh, you introduced me as an expert on this. I, uh, of course, I'm far away from that. But um, as far as I know, uh, Liszt was a legendary pianist. Uh, most of his inspiration came from his personality. You know, he was an exceptional personality, which we could also feel on the stage. So at the moment he walked on stage, he had a big stage presence, an incredible stage presence. And, uh, and with his improvisations that we talked today in the concert hall before in my recital, I mentioned that uh, from Liszt's age, uh, he actually invented the piano recital itself. It's a very important thing about Franz Liszt. Also, um, he usually started his concert with improvisations on the themes of himself or on his uh, 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 composers from the same age as, as he mm -hmm. uh, was living. So the well-known themes of, of, of his age and also his personality was the most important in his, in his performances, I think. That's very important. About the cleanliness of his playing, there are certain rumors around still because um, I think he wasn't not the most perfect uh, instrumentalist uh, at his age, which we can talk about it later a little bit. It's nice to know it's he very was human. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as in Hungary, we say that um, people could clean you know, the, the, the stage after the concert because they had to clean the wrong notes he was playing on the concert. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, well, Johanetan, yeah, let, let yeah. me ask you quickly, yeah. just a, a little int introduction to Paganini. How great a violinist was Paganini? Uh, I think in one sentence, uh, before him and after him, there was nobody like him. What he did for violin was first of all a, a hike in the expansion of what a violin and a violinist could do. And I can't think of anyone since who has been able to create such an upward uh, to a completely new plateau of, of using the instrument. At the most, the margin may have been expanded and uh, some of his concepts have been expanded, but I can't actually think. Even, even his, uh, some of his uh, followers uh, who were incredibly, wrote incredible, challenging and technically hard music, uh, it's basically Paganini with some more rather than a whole new experience. But what Paganini also was, and that sometimes get missed, and I would like to mention it later on, is an exceptional composer mm. to the extent that at USC, at the composer's seminar, they study his caprices as compositional marks, landmark. <laughs> Let, let's just stay with them as performers for the moment. Adam, do you get the feeling that technique has advanced since Liszt? This is a very difficult question. Um, 
in a sense of uh, uh, Paganini's presence in, in his age. Uh, Liszt was also revolutionary. Uh, uh, we want to talk about the composing part later, but yeah. he's a revolutionary pianist. It's hard to separate it's the two. It's hard to separate the yes. two, but I, yeah. I'm trying to because <laughs> the question is now about his performances. He was a revolutionary pianist getting incredible colors, sounds, and, and out of the piano on the concerts and also revolutionizing the piano technique himself. It's very important that, that he, he also took piano playing to a different dimension. Have there been greater pianists since Liszt? Um, we should have some recordings about his, his, ah. his playing, <laughs> and we don't have that. Mm. So, so we, we probably don't know the answer for that question. And, um, and um, probably the revolution he, bring, he brought to the piano, uh, Vladimir Horowitz made a few transcriptions of Liszt transcriptions. You know, he, he you know, all the, the great uh, pianists of the 20th century had their own taste and color and style to add to his compositions. One more question about them both as performers. What would a Paganini recital have been like, Johannatan? Ooh, you put me on the spot. I have to make a quick confession. I am not a history buff. I uh -huh. approach music more from the theory aspect. But uh, most of... Uh, he worked for a long time at courts. And uh, only later in his life, I think around the, his 40s, his, uh, he had a big performance in La Scala. And from there, the touring has started. Uh, his pieces mostly relied on playing with orchestra, so he needed an orchestra accompaniment. Uh, almost totally. There are, of course, some of the pieces which he wrote for solo. Most of the compositions, if they were not the concerti, were theme and variations. And he really developed this uh, genre of theme and variation using both the technical aspects and his imagination as a composer to really go beyond what anybody has ever done before. And he also performed some, his modified versions of other pieces, for example, mm -hmm. concerts by Viotti, concertos by Viotti, which he made about 25 times harder, because otherwise he'd be bored. Uh, but I think that, that, as far as I know, that's was it. Again, I'm not a scholar. Yeah, I think we get the impression, mm -hmm. though, that um, Paganini's music was the most important for Paganini, and other composers was their mu music that he could play around with and make it his own. I well, mostly, I think a lot of those violinists played their own music. And later yes. on also, Ernst plays own music. Yeah. And uh, Vinyavsky, they were all violinist composers, which is something that for a long time in the 20th century we didn't see as much. But I think now it's coming back. There's a lot of people who are creating their own music. Yeah. Paganini was 30 years older than Liszt, so a whole generation older. So now Liszt... Um, as, as a pianist, he had a lot of respect and a lot of time for other composers' music, didn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. He also, uh, going on the same wave uh, with you now about his performances, um, his presence and his personality uh, um, gave a, um, a rock concert-like uh, kind of response from the audience at the time. It was incredible how thousands of people, uh, people at the time could could he could capture mm -hmm. and and as he invented the piano recitals himself that was the first experience in the in the music history when when a pianist would capture so many people at the same time let's combine the composing side of things now and the legacy as composers um list how great a composer one of the greats uh, my favorite <laughs> <laughs> and uh and probably one of the greatest um I think there is there is a certain misunderstanding about his compositions, which I, I would like to um, to clarify because um, uh, obviously he's a very very uh, popular and loved composer in Hungary, in in my country and in, in my home country, and also uh, around the world. Um, some people may think that his compositions are because of the technical aspect he was discovering and because of the technical difficulties he was. Uh, uh, improving in the piano playing, that it's, a, it's an empty, shiny uh, 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 kind of uh, new thing which has no meaning at all. Let's see. I think, <laughs> you know, uh, 
some of you who has been there yesterday at, at the concert in the evening, the Liszt Sonata in B minor, I think it's a, it's a great uh, mm. proof of the opposite. Absolutely. That, that, that composition is just the most emotionally and, and technically as well, the most uh, beautiful and most demanding composition of all times and um, uh, on the piano. And I think this kind of uh, understanding list on the wrong way, because list is not an empty, shiny passages going up and down. He, has, he always was inspired by music, and the technical solutions come, came always from the musical aspect. It's very, very important for him. I just want to make one point, perhaps and it's a question, really. Did he make virtuosity uh, an integral part of the artistic experience? I, I, as opposed I, to something applied to the music. Absolutely, I think, yes, yes. And Paganini? Uh, <laughs> it's a little hard. I mean, you have to, first of all, before I say anything, you have to realize I've never written a line in my life. And the few times when I have it within one measure sounded like something I knew already. So I cannot... <laughs> Yeah, I cannot compose. So whatever I'm going to say, you must understand, comes from a performer's uh, ability. And as such, I could never write anything that Paganini wrote in terms of even just the inventiveness of, of writing the theme of La Campanella, the top, rap, 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 which List, by the way, also used uh, later. So, first of all, I'm in a position of humble humility. <laughs> that said... Uh, I think Paganini knew his clientele. So if you look at the concerti, they are definitely a kind of uh, Italian opera style, and they're not there to bring you into a deep depression. This is not young Werther. Uh, and as someone, my, my, unfortunately, my, my favorite composer is Bach, basically every, every, <laughs> every phrase that Bach wrote I would take to a desert island. So when I, and I, I do a lot of chamber music which does not delve into uh, technique in any way, it's the complete opposite. It's pure music and unfortunately we need hands and instruments to do it. If we could just do it without any physical intervention, it would be fantastic. That said, the caprices, for me, actually show what Paganini could do in terms of, first of all, using the, uh, the timbre of the violin and the, the ideas of the technique to create a world within each caprice. He basically mm -hmm. sticks with one or two different technical uh, concepts and he maximizes the atmosphere and the sound to, to a point of haunting. Secondly, if you look at the harmonical aspect, and that I usually approach music from harmony, it is as complex as a camel's stomach, so to say. <laughs> I stole that from Gerald Darrell, actually. Uh, <laughs> there's at least one caprice, if, if you will have a chance to listen tomorrow, number 12, which is so chromatic he probably visits every possible key, but almost in a Wagnerian way, using pivot chords and things that you don't even notice, and at some point, you are swimming and you don't even know where you are. And he chooses the keys for the caprices based on how the instrument would sound. There are certain keys which evoke the open strings of the instrument, what's called sympathetic resonance, and the instrument sounds more alive, more resonant, and there are keys, usually with a lot of flats, that make it sound more dead. Haydn was very much aware of it. There is a very famous uh, mm. movement in his uh, Opus 76, number no. 5 quartet, which is in F sharp major, which could also be G flat major. And it's known as the tombstones, because the six sharps looks like tombstone, and because the, 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 the scale makes all the instruments very dead. And it's a very still atmosphere. Paganini was very much aware of this. And he would choose his keys very smartly. And just the invention that goes into it is, is really fantastic.